Good evening. We're back. It's true. Your hostess, Michaela, and your host, Matthew, to talk about the man named Jesus, who will never leave nor forsake us. You see, his love is true, and he's asking me and you to be committed and connected. So don't hear the message and reject it. Just taste and see that the Lord is good. Aren't you tired of putting your faith in men and women who just turn around and disappoint you once again? But this man for all seasons gives us 10,000 reasons to love him. And while there's still time, he's ministering to you online. So won't you just take the time to get to know him? Wonderful, wonderful, Michaela. Wonderful spoken word. You know, I was truly blessed. You know, I see you're getting some skills there from our, our spoken word person, Shaquille Warren. You know, you know, it's well done. So viewers, you know, there's much more to come. Don't stay tuned. Um, we have beautiful singing. Of course, we have even more spoken word coming up and we enjoy you to stay tuned as we worship together. Yes, don't worry. All the items that you've come to know and love and enjoy are coming up next. So you still have time. Share the link, subscribe, like. Right, so before, before we wait any longer and keep you guys in suspense, we now invite the Lord's presence here with us tonight. Let us pray. Our Father, Lord, we want to thank you for today. We want to thank you for all that you have done for us today, for keeping us safe in our right minds to be able to view this program and learn about you today. And to be with every viewer that is watching at this time, be with their families, and may they continue to walk with you and may, even tonight, give their hearts to you. May you continue to get us and bless us. For Christ's sake, amen. 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 We just want to thank God for the opportunity we have to worship. We're so excited that you've joined us and continue to share and support this Crusades ministry, a man for all seasons. That's what we're talking about in this time. And we want to give that man some thanks. So we're going to give thanks. I want to hear the guys. Let's go. Because you know what? That is what worship is about. We're praising God. We're grateful. We're just happy for this gift of life. And as we thank God, we want to say, God, we thank you for this air that we're able to breathe. We thank you. We thank you so much for the opportunity to worship and do something different from other persons who don't know you. So we're grateful, Lord. I will continue to worship you. This is the air I breathe. 
we glorify his name I want you to get off your feet wherever you are and enjoy this moment of worship with us Every 
Amen and good evening again, everyone. It's so good to have you in the house tonight again. Good evening, brothers and sisters. Good evening, friends. Good evening, family. We are happy to have you. You are in the right place tonight. If you haven't missed a night yet, great. You are in for an A grade. But I want to tell you tonight, this evening, you're gonna, your topic is enjoying this man. You have met so much of this man, so many characteristics of this man. So tonight, this evening, in fact, you're going to be enjoying this man, a little more enjoyment of this man. So hear what? Call up a friend. Call up a family member. Call up a sister or brother, somebody, and share the link with them. Let them know, hey, the man for the season is on again this evening. And tonight's topic is enjoying this man. And hear what? Before you do or go anywhere. Hey, listen. Your coffee break was, has ended. So stay right there. Let me give you some information. Your free book for this evening is entitled The Power of a Positive No. Click on that link right now. Download that book and get in touch reading The Power of a Positive No. You know, sometimes we don't know how to say no. But this book is going to teach you how to say no in a positive way. And not only that, but we have... I'm letting you know of all the links you can tap into right now. You have right in your home your prayer, your prayer room. You don't have to go far. Just go into the link, click prayer room, and you have your problem. You want to deal with it right now? Click right there. Go in there. Someone waiting there to, to, how to help you, to pray with you, to share your prayer, to intercede with you. Go right now on that prayer link, and if you have a prayer request, and you can't go into, into the prayer link, or you don't want to go into the prayer link, click on that prayer request link right now. Submit your prayer request, and we will call it everyone, and we will pray for you. The very said prayer group members will pray for you. Don't worry, hello. The, this is coming to a close. We don't want you to miss out much. Call your friends, call your family, let them know this man for all season is on. Yes, and so you can make your decision. Remember last Sabbath from Friday evening, the pastor talked about baptism. And so many people gave their lives. You might be in the valley of decision this evening. You might be wanting to make that decision to follow Jesus Christ. Don't let anyone subdue you. Don't let anyone prevent you. Friend, hear what my, hear, this is my thing for you. This is my secret to you. Go right now. Click on that link. Fill out the decision card and make a decision for Jesus. You don't have to study no one else. Take my word for it. It's the best decision you would ever make. And not only that too, you have problems. Listen, we have been contacting people for counseling. It's been going great. We still have to contact some people for counseling. There are many more to contact. We want to help. We want to share with you your problem. We want to support you in your problem, what you're going through. And we want to introduce you to the man called Christ Jesus, who is the great counselor. So we are just his supporting members, and we are here to help you. So click on that link right now, counseling, 
we are available for you. Just put your name, your telephone number, and we'll get into contact with you. If you have an email address, put it in as well. We need to intercede with you. Okay, and don't forget, gather your young children around, your youth members in your home, in your family, those around in your community, let them know Thursday evening is the youth evening. There is where you get all the vibrant, the interesting topic all about young people. So here what? All the links are there. Click on the links, check on all the things, and you get through, okay? This is your promoter for the evening. I'm Van Ray Paul, and tell, wishing you and inviting you to touch base every evening with us for the man for all season. Thank you. Oh, 
Did you know that the first marriage took place in the Garden of Eden between Adam and Eve with God as the pastor? The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 verse 28 that God blessed Adam and Eve. God told them to have children. He wanted them to have a family. God loved families. Members of a family love and care for each other. That's how it will be in heaven with all of God's people. Though he slays me, I will give to him all of my trust. Though the earth gives way and the mountain falls into the heart of the sea, I will sing a hymn of joy from deep within me. You see, my God supplies all my needs through thick and thin, in sunshine or rain, in ease or pain. And even when I complain, he's there beside me, sticking like a clear plastic food wrapping, hedging me under the shadow of his wings till I break forth with joyous clapping. So why shouldn't I be joyful when he fills my heart with joy and laughter? Red seas part as my enemies scatter. A table set before me in the midst of a disaster. A hand to always guide me before and after. A balm to heal my wounds and not cover it like a plaster. He speaks for me to grow in grace and not mere words to flatter. So that is why I'm joyful. Oh, that is why I'm joyful. Since I'm never left alone and my expectations have been exceeded by the one who sits on heaven's throne. For while I was yet his enemy, grace beyond what I have known, met justice on the cross at Calvary, the gift of love was shown. So friends, as Job said clearly, though my world around me grows dim, even if my God were to slay me, with joy I will trust him. What an awesome God. Friends, yes, I invite you tonight to bow your head with me as we continue to meet this man for all seasons. Father in heaven, we thank you, we praise you, we adore you for your matchless love. You are God, our God who have not forgotten us, you have not left us alone in spite of all the situations that we may be going through on this earth. In spite of all the COVID deaths and all the COVID virus that we are facing at this time, you have not left us alone. You're a God who loves us beyond all measure. Father in heaven, tonight I thank you and I praise you for your love. I thank you for the opportunity to come before your throne of grace once again. To intercede on behalf of all our friends who are with us at this time. Whatever they may be going through. There may be some people who are going through drug addiction. There are some people who may, may, going to be, may be going through some battle in their homes, some financial battle, some problems, some issues in their homes. I bring before you every issue, dear God, knowing that you are more than able to deal with every problem that we have. We thank you, O oh God, for those who have given their lives to you in baptism. And we know that there are others who are waiting. We know there are others who are considering 
to give their lives to you also. I pray, dear God, that you'll trouble their hearts, dear Father, that they will surrender to you even now. Even those who are considering to click on that link for prayer or maybe just for counseling, whatever problems they may be going through, Father in heaven, I pray that you'll help them to click on that link to ask for prayer, dear God. I pray, dear God, that as we continue in this evangelistic effort, that you'll continue to touch hearts and minds, dear Father, before it is eternally too late. Be with our pastor in a mighty way, dear God. Cover him with the blood of Christ Jesus. Anoint him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. And as he speaks tonight, may hearts and minds be touched and may, be, may souls be won for eternal kingdom. In Jesus' precious and most holy name, amen and amen. Goodness of God. 
What Amen. wonderful praise and worship as always. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Yes. And now we have our sermon for the evening by Pastor Randy Dixon. And as you would have heard, the topic for tonight is enjoying this man. And there are so many things to enjoy about our relationship with Jesus that I cannot even begin to guess what pastor will be talking about tonight. Matthew, would you care to take a guess? Ah, I, I can only imagine, you know, um, you know we, we have learned through the past week that, you know, God speaks to us in many different ways, you know, and, you know, he has, his love language, as we have learned, is, is obedience, right? And, you know, I'd just like to tell the viewers, you know, a fun fact about this man, right, called Jesus. Um, it is said that back in the day, he spoke approximately three languages, right? So feel free to fact check me on this. Um, he spoke Aramic, you know, he would have learned Hebrew from the Torah, and he may spoke a little, you know, speak a little bit of Greek as well, where, you know, he was told that when he was speaking to the centurion, he would have been speaking a bit of Greek. So, you know, we see that he's, he's multilingual, lingual, sorry, right? So, you know, it's something that, you know, we should bear in mind that God is able to understand us in any language that we choose to speak to him Amen. in. Yes, but we'll have to wait to hear what Pastor has to say about enjoying this man. Most so before Pastor comes on, we have our theme song, Jesus at the Center. Amen. Thank you. 
Good evening, everybody. It is great to have you here again for the ninth episode of the series, A Man for All Seasons. It has been a blessing to me, and I know it has been a blessing to you. We, the Crusade team, we've received quite a number of calls. Uh, we continue to receive your uh, commendation, your counsel, your prayers. Uh, we really want to say thank you Thank you, thank you for reaching out for your feedback. We really, really appreciate you. Uh, it, has been, it has been great. We have been having a really, really good time. And we want to go straight into it uh, this evening. Uh, last evening, um, yesterday was our off night. So that Sunday, we, we, we did some reminiscing. We went back into time. We went back to our childhood and, and we remembered all those special things. We remember the mug and the chair and the living room and uh, all, all these things set aside and put aside for special use. And on this foundation, we, 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 we had a better understanding of what God did when he set aside that seventh day. The Bible says that he sanctified it. He made it special. He made it holy for us. A special day for God to spend with us. We were the prize of creation. And on the seventh day, the seventh day of the week, he rested, sanctified it. That day, Saturday, we call it, was set aside for holy use. The Sabbath is for our benefit. A gift from God, a day to rest, a day for fellowship, a day for service to humanity, a day to reflect on God as creator, as father, and a day for spiritual renewal and growth. God's love is made clear for us. He presents his love so clearly by giving us this gift. And though this day is a gift, it is one that should be honored. Although it is free, it is not for us to decide whether we're going to take it or not. God says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And today, we love Jesus. The seventh day Sabbath, the fourth commandment of ten, says to us, remember. It is a good way to start the commandment. Because when it was given to the Israelites, they would have spent 400 years in Egypt and the bondage, and God says to them, remember, and, and he's saying the same thing to us today. Because it seems like this commandment has conveniently been forgotten. So in the 21st century, God still says, remember the seventh day to keep it holy. This commandment, just like all the others, this commandment is timeless and should be honored. Let us not do what is convenient to us, but let us do what is required by God, remembering that obedience is his love language. Let us pray. Our Father, tonight we come to you, Lord, thanking you for life, thanking you for this precious gift. Lord, we pray that as we continue to spend time with you, as we continue to spend time in your word, we would accept believe and obey what you've asked us to do. And Father, we learned that it is not because you're some big bad bully in the sky trying to control, but it is because you are a loving Father that you've presented us with these commandments and these gifts so that we could have abundant life, so that we could enjoy our experience with you. So be with us tonight as we go deeper, as we understand more about you. May your spirit speak through me, and may all those viewing right now or even later, may they be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Tonight we are talking a bit about marriage, 
And it seems as though we live in a society where this thing called marriage is not as seen as a, is not seen as a good or noble institution anymore. For many of our young people, and, and all we're going to talk about tonight, this is done from research stats. This is not my opinion. Many of our young people, our millennials are saying no, no to traditional marriage. It is predicted that an unprecedented portion of these young people will remain unmarried maybe until they're like 40. The rate of marriage, uh, it might drop to about 70%. And although before in the past, marriage would have taken a downward trajectory with this new generation, it has now gone into free fall. One study says that 25% of millennials may not get married at all. One journalist and writer says not getting married at all could prove tragic as he reviews the economic and social benefits of marriage. Here we are seeing the devil again, that old serpent. He tried to mess up Adam and Eve, and he's still at us. He's trying again to make null and void something that God has established. God has established marriage, and he established Sabbath as great gifts and benefits for us. And God knows that these gifts even go beyond our spiritual being. He understands that, yes, we are spiritual, but we are not only spiritual. We are social and we are emotional. We have ideas and dreams. And we live in a world that is challenging. So God gives these two institutions so that we could have a better experience. So that we could have that abundant life that he's been talking about. Marriage indeed reflects the union that God wants for his church. Marriage serves and, 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 and fulfills the command that he gave to Adam and Eve to be fruitful and multiply. But marriage also gives us great benefits and pays great dividends in our daily lives. And tonight we're going to look at 10 benefits that marriage brings to us. 10 benefits. And as I call them, I want you to type them in the chat. I want to make sure you're paying attention tonight. Those young people who are thinking about getting married, those who are married, I want to make sure that you are listening. If you're not married, type as well because you will learn something tonight. Amen, Elder Van Roy. I want you to type. And if you want to add anything to it, you could add. Just make sure it's biblical as we discuss. Let's begin. Research says, and, and these 10 are not in any particular order of importance, research says that marriage is safer. Marriage lowers the risk for both men and women. It lowers the risk of men and women becoming victims of violence including domestic violence. Single and divorced women were four to five times more likely to be victims of violence in a given year over wives. Bachelors, four times more likely to be involved in a violent crime than husbands. It is also said that two-thirds of acts of violence against women are committed by intimate partners that are not husbands. So this is saying that uh, two-thirds of the acts of violence committed against women are committed by boyfriends or, or by former husbands. So marriage keeps you safer. Number two says that it can save your life. Married people live longer and healthier lives longer and healthier lives. The power of marriage is particularly evident in the late Middle Age. 
So when you hit those middle ages, when, when you hit that uh, 45 and upward, it says 9 out of 10 married men who are alive at 48 will make it to 65. This compares to the only six single guys who live to 48 will make it to 65. So nine out of 10 men who are married, when they get to 48, more than likely going to make it to 65. With single guys, this is only six. Nine out of 10 wives alive at age 48 will become senior citizens. Eight out of 10 divorced or single women once they reach 48, will become senior citizens. This seems to have a greater benefit for men. Statisticians Cohen and Lee, they make this statement. Being unmarried is one of the greatest risks that people voluntarily subject themselves to. Being unmarried is one of the greatest risks that people voluntarily subject themselves to. It says, having heart disease, for example, reduces a man's life by about six years. But being unmarried can reduce a man's life by almost 10 years. A recent study shows that patients coming out of surgery, those who are married have a better chance of surviving the surgery than those who are single. Being married, live longer. Number three, it can save your children's lives. It says that children lead healthier, longer lives if parents get and stay married. Marriage ensures that children have access to a mother and a father. Mothers and fathers have unique and complementary roles in children's development. Some of the most Important benefits children receive from married parents are love and attention. This, therefore, makes them less likely to engage in behaviors such as premarital sex, substance abuse, delinquency, and suicide. Children with married parents have better emotional and physical health than those raised by a single parent. Children with married parents fare better economically. So children, their lives are saved. Number four, you will earn more money. And this one speaks to men, really. It says men today tend to think of marriage as a financial burden. But a broad and deep scientific study suggests that marriage is a productive institution. Marriage is just as important as education in boosting a man's earnings. So men, if you want to uh, make some more money, get married. Amen. <laughs> Number five, you will become stronger financially. Married people not only make more money, but they manage money better and build more wealth together than they would alone. Number six, it increases fidelity. I found this interesting, and you will see why. Marriage increases sexual fidelity. Cohabitating men, listen to this, cohabitating men are four times more likely to treat than husbands. And cohabitating women are eight times more likely to cheat than wives. Marriage is also the only realistic promise of permanence in a romantic relationship. I found this interesting, the, the figures regarding men and women. Number seven, some people may disagree with this one, but it says, you won't go crazy. You won't go crazy. Marriage keeps you from going crazy. Marriage is good for your mental health. Married men and women are less depressed, 
less anxious, and less psychologically distressed than those single, divorced, or widowed. By contrast, getting divorced lowers both men's and women's mental health. It increases depression, hostility. It lowers one's self-esteem, and your purpose in life becomes uncertain. You won't go crazy. Number seven. Number eight. It will make you happy. For most people, the joys of the single life and of divorce are overrated. Many people will say, I am happy. I am happier alone. I am happier by myself. Or uh, my best, the best time of my life is when I left and I divorced that person. It says, overall, 40% of married people, compared with about 25% of singles, say that they are very happy. One recent study done in about 17 developed nations said that married persons had a significantly higher level of happiness than those who weren't married. 17 developed nations this study was done in over a period. And it found that married persons had and have a significantly higher level of happiness than persons who are not married. If you're married in the chat, say amen. Your kids will love you more, number nine. Your kids, your children would love you more. Divorce weakens the bonds between parents and children over the long run. Adult children of divorce describe relationships with both their mother and father in a less positive way. And they are about 40% less likely to interact with their parents several times a week. So it says that uh, adults who came from Divorce situations, broken homes are unhappy and uh, they are 40% less likely to reach out and maintain a relationship with their parents. Number 10. I think this is a good one. You will have better sex more often. Who goes past it? It's real long to get to that one, boy. Pastor, you should start with that. You will have better sex more often. Somebody type that in the chat. You will have better sex more often. Amen. Both husbands and wives are more likely to report that they have an extremely satisfying sex life more than singles and cohabitators. Cohabitors, sorry. Married people. Married people are also more likely to report a highly satisfying sex life. Contrary to popular belief for men, having a wife beats shacking up by a wide margin. 50% of husbands say that sex with their partner is extremely satisfying compared to a 39% of men who are just shacking up. What great benefits marriage provides for men, women, children, and the society. It also impacts university students. It's interesting. Many students have said at university that the lecturers who give the most assignments and the ones that are the hardest Markers are those who are single. And this final stat came from my own research. <laughs> if being married the way God designed can bring so many benefits, even in a sinful world, even being married to another sinful individual, can you imagine the benefits that you can gain from being in a relationship with the man for all seasons? 
We had a baptism last Sabbath. Uh, we will be having one again, Sabbath coming. Amen. Amen. This baptism represents a lifelong commitment to Jesus. But what are some of the benefits of being in this relationship? What are some of the benefits? We, we looked at the benefits of being married. But what are some of the benefits of being in this relationship, this lifelong relationship with Jesus? Let's have a look. Number one, Jesus is a lifelong companion. If you need a lifelong companion, if you need a friend for life, Jesus is the guy for you. Amen. Proverbs 18, 24 says, One who has unreliable friends soon come to ruin. But there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Amen. If you're looking for a teacher, a, a mentor, a role model, someone to be there for you no matter what, Jesus is that person. Amen. How many times, and I'm speaking from experience, I know how many times have you felt alone or sad? How many times have you taken up that phone and you've tried calling a friend and there was no answer? How, how many times you, you call another one and if they do answer, they're busy? And sometimes at that moment, you need that person the most. Even in your relationship, sometimes even in your marriage. But this guy, Jesus Christ... He's always there. Every time you call, he's going to pick up. He says that he will never, ever leave you. No matter what happens, no matter the situation, Jesus is right there with you. Number two. I think benefit one is enough. We could end the night. But we have more. Benefit two. You make better decisions. Just like in a marriage... Better decisions are made as you discuss the family needs. As you sit with your wife and discuss and you pray out rise, you can make better decisions. In a relationship with Jesus, we make better decisions. Whether we are single or whether we're married. And this is done because as a Christian, I want to let you know that you have an inside source. As a Christian, you have a man on the inside, past present and future. John 16, 13 says, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. Amen. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. Many times when we hear this guide into all truth, we think of spiritual things alone. We think of uh, doctrines and, and Bible but I want to let you know that God is interested in every aspect of my life. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So when the Bible says all truth, I believe he means all truth regarding every experience I am going through. Yes. Somebody type all truth in the chat. All truth. All truth. All truth. Who I should marry. The job I should take. The medication I should take. Whether or not I should have that vocation where my children should go to school. How many times, how many of you were about to make a decision and the Spirit directed you another way? Yes. And it may have been vets, but the Spirit directed you another way and afterwards you realize that God saved you from a terrible mistake. Yes. Yes. Of course, in this, our obedience is of paramount importance. You can't have this benefit without obedience. All truth. Number three. In this relationship with the man for all seasons, you are now part of a new family. Ephesians 2, 18 to 19 makes it plain. It says, For through him, we both have access to the Father by one spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people, and also members of his household. Amen. When we enter into this relationship with Christ, we are, we are to no longer be strangers with each other. All of us are now sons and daughters of Christ. We are, we are now brothers and sisters in him. And this is not only on a 
spiritual plane, but our behavior is supposed to reflect such. Acts 2, 44 to 47, it says, All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Family. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They went to church together. They broke bread in their homes and they ate together. They had lunches together. They had parties together. They praised God together. Enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. When you are in a relationship with this man for all seasons, you're not by yourself. You are part of a family. You are not part of a family of people who love you, who care about your well-being, who continually seek to help you to improve as an individual. You are no longer left on your own trying to figure it out, but your brothers and, and your sisters, they are now in your corner and, and they've been given a mandate from Jesus to take care of you. Of course, you're also to take care of your new brothers and sisters too. The family's aim is for all its siblings to grow to be like their father. A new family. Your financial situation is better, number four. Your financial situation improves. Tied into the fact that you are led into all truth, it's financial truth. You are now guided in your spending so when you walk past that store and you see those shoes and, and, and you know you really don't need them, that little voice says, Michaela, don't buy those shoes. Come on now. Additionally, in most cases, before uh, you're a Christian, most people, many people, spend money in partying, spend money in drinks, and, and, and you go to the bar and you buy for everybody, spend money on things you don't need. Here's what Solomon says in Proverbs 15, 6. The house of the righteous contains great treasure. But the income of the wicked brings ruin. And in Malachi 3, 10, God gives a command with a blessing. He says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this says the Lord Almighty. Yeah. And see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not know, yeah. you will not have enough room yeah. to receive it. Yeah. I love this language. God says, bring it. Yeah. Test me. And he says, look, when you do it, when you obey me, I'm going to throw it. It's not I'm going to open it, the door a little bit and, and see what happens. He says, I'm going to throw it open. So much will, will, will come at you that you, you won't have room to receive it. God's desire, when we are obedient to him and have entered into this relationship, is to bless us beyond what we can contain. We are to be so blessed that others are blessed just by our overflowing Aren't you tired of living from paycheck to paycheck? Aren't you tired of, of, of deciding whether you should buy, uh, should I buy one doubles and a solo or two doubles and drink water at home? In this relationship, Jesus takes us from even considering doubles because he has promised to feed us of the heritage of Jacob. And that heritage is not a heritage of poverty. Number five, we are healthier. We are healthier. There's no secret. Everyone knows this. Christians generally outlive non-Christians. And this is because of the lifestyle and, and because of God's sovereignty. God tells Israel, Exodus 15, 26, if you listen carefully, if you listen carefully, to the Lord your God, and if you do what is right in his eyes, here it is, you have to, you, you listen and you do. If you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases, the diseases I brought on the Egyptians. For I am the Lord who heals you. 
And this is also a promise for us today. David gives counsel to the righteous in Psalm 103, verses 2 and 3. He says, Praise the Lord my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all sins and heals all your diseases. Jesus brings healing and instructs us on how to live healthy lives so that his children can be healthy and, and, and prosperous, especially in these times of illness. An article written in the Los Angeles Times, this is not written in, in, in a, a Christian magazine. Los Angeles Times in 2015, an article it states, studies have shown that the Seventh-day Adventists who have a broad range of ethnic backgrounds live as much as a decade longer than the rest of us, which led to Loma Linda being identified as one of five longevity spots called Blue Zones on the planet. And this one is the only one in the United States. So in the whole world, there are five Blue Zones where people live long. And one of those Blue Zones is Loma Linda where there is a high population of Seventh-day Adventist Christians because of the lifestyle, because of the health message. We live longer and healthier when we obey God and do what he tells us to do. Number six, you are victorious over the things that make you miserable. You are victorious over the things that make you miserable. We can all admit that sometimes we get frustrated. Sometimes we get anxious and we get miserable and we get snappy and no one really wants to be around us. But in this relationship, Jesus teaches us how to overcome these situations. I want to let you know that all these self-help gurus and all these persons who, who teach us how to overcome these negative habits, they all use biblical, biblical, biblical principles in their teachings. All these guys that want to tell you how to, to, to be happy and how to be less negative and how to do this and how to do that, they all use Bible principles. And some years ago, a friend of mine introduced me to Tony Robbins. I know you guys know him. And Tony Robbins introduced me to, to his series and his life coaching, and this person paid thousands of dollars to go to his seminar in America. And then this person bought all the resources to listen to every day to help them succeed. And as I listened to the first lesson, I said to this person, you could have saved tons of money by switching to Bible. She could have bought a Bible and spent the same time and receive the same information and much more. Because in that Bible, she could have connected to the real source for full transformation. Philippians 4.8 Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent, anything praiseworthy, Think on these things. The Bible gives us a free guide as to how to overcome the things that affect us individually, how to overcome the things that affect our relationships. The Bible is right there. This relationship with the man for all seasons helps you. Number seven, it gives you peace of mind. Peace of mind. And this ties into the point above, but this is even more than just overcoming a character flaw. This speaks to the fact that your relationship with the man for all seasons, it gives you a peace for any situation. Jesus says in John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you, I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. John 16, 33. Jesus says again, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. 
in this world you have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. And this peace that Jesus gives is a peace that causes you to sleep well at night. It's a peace, it's a peace that makes you smile even when things are hard. It is a peace that causes you not to be afraid within this pandemic. This peace causes you not to be swayed and moved into fear with every conspiracy theory that is going around. This peace, it is a peace that lets you know that Jesus has overcome the world. Jesus has overcome all the evils of the world. And soon and very soon, we too will soon overcome. He says, my peace I give to you. Number eight. In this relationship with Jesus, in this commitment with Jesus, he gives stronger families. You see, because Jesus becomes that family counselor. He becomes the one who leads you in how to deal with every situation. When there is a disagreement, he tells you, remember, a soft answer turneth away wrath. And if you are thinking like Jesus, if you have the mind of Christ and you respond like Jesus, the bacchanal over the glass in the sink, it doesn't escalate to a week's argument about what you did in 2004. In your marriage, he tells husbands to love their wives as he loved the church. He tells wives to respect their husbands. He tells fathers to Uh, not to lead the children to be provoked by words and their actions. He tells children to obey parents. All the challenges we have in our our society and family and broken homes. Jesus has the solution. This relationship with the man for all seasons, it impacts us in a way that we can never understand. This change in family translate to society. If our families would only fall in love with Jesus, if our daddies and our mummies would only put Jesus first. Number nine, you are happier in this life. When you're in a committed relationship with Jesus, you're happier. I have had a few people say to me recently, but there is something different about you. You now seem so mature in the Lord. And I take no credit for it because I don't even recognize it. But they see it. And then that song comes to mind, the longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. You don't know, but you become happier and and people see it. Everyone is looking for the formula for a happy life. It seems to be the universal objective. Everybody wants to know how to be happier. But few have come up with the answer. Some try money. Some try women, men. Position, drugs, sports, entertainment, travel, some, some have alone time, some meditate, and the list goes on, but it is never found because happiness is only found when you find Jesus. He says in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans, I know the purpose, I know the future I have for you. When we enter into the relationship with the man for all seasons, our purpose is relieved, is, is revealed. And when we accept that purpose, we experience real happiness because only God's purpose for our life can fill that space. Only through Him can we be happy. I want to let you know that it was never God's intention for us to be unhappy, for us to be miserable so you live 70 or or 80 years and and you're miserable. So you're miserable your whole life on on earth and happy your whole life on earth, and then when you get to heaven, you're all of a sudden happy. That was not God's intention for us. God has thoughts of peace towards us. He wants us to be happy now. 
And as long as we align our will with God's will, we are going to be happy. And finally, number 10. Benefit. Eternal life. Amen. Eternal life. Amen. The fountain of youth. Oh, yes. The tree of life. Amen. Some people uh, try to, you know, they want to transfer their, their consciousness into a computer before they die. Some people talk about the philosopher's stone and the, the one religion has the, the, the peaches of immortality. One has the golden apples, another the holy grail. All attempts. But all of these myth, fiction, nothing true about them. Eternal life is not ours to determine how it comes by. It is possible to come by but only through a relationship with Jesus Christ. The greatest benefit of this relationship with the man for all seasons is to be with him forever and ever. Jesus says in John 11, 25 and 26, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die, and whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Eternal life is our ultimate reward. Amen. Being with Jesus, being with all of heaven, forever and ever. Listen to this quote. It says, it speaks about a Christian living. It says, when the prize is this great, the price is nothing at all. When the prize is this great, let me translate that for you. When the benefits are so huge, giving up what you have to give up for Jesus is nothing at all. Nothing. God gives us everything we could possibly want or need. He also sees clearly how we should live our lives. He has laid out the perfect life before us. And if we are 100% obedient to everything he puts on our heart, then this life will bring us in, into complete joy. We will have strength and power to go through life without ever being miserable. And this joyous life of freedom will continue into eternity. Amen. Do you want to experience that life? I do. But it is only fair, as we wrap up, it is only fair that I present to you the benefits of having a relationship with the devil. I think it is fair. I have to give you both sides. So the benefits of a relationship with the devil. Let's go. Number one. There are none. There are no benefits whatsoever. No benefits into getting into a relationship with a man that wants to kill you. There's no benefit, no benefit, nothing to be derived from a, a, a relationship with, with, with the enemy who wants to take everything from you. And ultimately, he just wants you to join him in hell. Yeah. Yeah. No benefit. So tonight, as the appeal song plays, one question. Can you really afford to say no to Jesus? No. Easy decision. Yeah. Easy. It's actually not much of a decision. It is, it is either death or life. Yeah. Eternal life or eternal death. It is having a genuinely happy life now or faking it every day. Can you really afford to say no to Jesus? We've got to wrap up. So click that link. Click on that decision card and make that decision for Jesus today. You have been viewing. You have been listening. And the Spirit is telling you that this is the time to make the decision. Your life has been spared time and time again. Leading you to this time right now. 
Are you sure that you're going to get another chance? Are you sure? Click that link. If your phone is about to, if your phone is ringing, decline the call. Click the link. If you're listening to this and you're driving, pull over and click the link. You still have time to get home. Pull over. Click the link. Fill it out. Make that decision for Jesus because Jesus wants you in his family. He wants you to enjoy all these benefits right now. And he wants you to enjoy the eternal benefit, eternal life. He has made all things possible. This is no gimmick. This is no joke. Just choose Jesus tonight. I want to pray for you as you make that decision. Oh, Father, so many benefits, a list that cannot be exhausted, a list that has no end, serving you, being one with you, Father, is the greatest decision we could ever make. Father, there are no benefits, nothing we gain from being on the enemy's ground, and, 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 and you've made this clear. We have seen over and over. Tonight, Lord, someone is fighting to make that decision. Send your spirit. Send your spirit, Father, to, to, to wrestle with them so that they can give in. They can click that link. They can make that call. They can reach out to the person who invited them and say, yes, I want to give my life to Jesus. Yes, I want to be in that number. Yes, I want to go all the way into that water. I want to experience the benefits of being in a relationship with that man for all seasons. Bless them and those who have made that decision, Father. Seal it. Seal it, Father, until you come. In Jesus' name. Welcome back, viewers. You know, what's another wonderful message from Pastor Randy Dixon, you know? Um, I was just thinking to myself that, you know, one of the benefits he quoted was that, you know, if you get married, you wouldn't be crazy. So, you know, I am married and I can truly attest that I'm not crazy and I'm truly happily married, um, you know. But more importantly, we realize that, you know, having a relationship with Jesus, you know, gives you so much benefits, you know, in health, in, in family, you know, and, and I can attest truly that I am who I am today because of that relationship with Christ. Yeah. I don't know, Michaela, could you just tell us anything, benefits that you have from that relationship with Christ you'd want to share? Well, what stood out to me was that you make better decisions. Yeah. Yeah. And the best decision you could make tonight is surrendering your life to Jesus. Yeah. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Yeah. So click Click on the decision card. I appeal to you once more. And surrender your life to Jesus. There's where you will find true joy and true peace and true happiness. And remember that the greatest decision you can share with the world is that Jesus, Jesus is, is coming, coming soon. soon.